training your end users on some of the proper security procedures and making them aware of these security problems can be paramount in your organization. You don't want people doing things like putting their passwords on sticky notes. But people don't think about how other people might use that data walking by their workstation, seeing the password, and then causing a problem with security in your organization. You also have to think about how data might be handled. Let users know exactly where to store their data on the network so that they don't have that data getting into the wrong hands or have people that should not be seeing that data have access to it. A lot of people just put things in public folders, not thinking about how everyone in the organization might have access to that. Some companies have a clean desk policy. You train your users so they keep nothing on their desk. If you're using some information, you can have it on your desk. If you leave the desk, if you leave for the day, everything comes off the desk and it all gets locked up. You might also have users these days with a lot of personally owned devices. They might bring in a tablet. They have their own mobile devices. And you want to be sure that those devices are using the network in a safe way. Maybe you've set up a completely separate network just for those mobile devices. And you want to train your users on how to use that network rather than the private corporate network to be able to access the internet. And of course, there's physical security you have to think about. If somebody's carrying a big box of donuts in and they're not one of the employees, people are dying to open the door and help you out with the box that you're carrying, especially if you're carrying some type of food. So have people think about who they're letting in the building, checking for the badges they might be wearing, and making sure that the bad guys aren't simply walking in the door. Most users know that they're running antivirus on their computer, but it's good to make them aware that the virus problem is a big one. You're having thousands and thousands of viruses every week. You want to be sure that we're able to let the users update their systems, that they understand why they're having to wait for their systems to be updated. But you also have to make sure they understand the other ways the bad guys could get to them. And phishing attacks these days are all the rage. The bad guys are directing these mails to particular organizations and having people click on links to put in usernames, passwords, or other type of private information. You have to have your users think about those situations and understand that most of the time, that's going to be some type of trap to get them to give away private information. Spyware is a big problem in corporate America. If you can infect one machine, you can then start having a keylogger run. You can watch where they browse. You can look at information that's going in and out of that system. You can control different computers to be able to send that information back to you. So spyware, of course, becomes also a major concern, especially in very sensitive environments. And of course, we as network professionals have to always stay up to date because you never know when somebody's going to find some type of exploit that nobody's seen before. So we have to make sure our users know that we are going to be patching your systems. There's going to be delays associated with this at times, but it's so we can make sure that nobody's able to take advantage of your particular workstation. Another challenge in our large environments is users will often use peer-to-peer -peer software, and they don't understand exactly the impact that can have. A study done in February of 2009 for the Center for Digital Strategies at Dartmouth College did two weeks of research where they went out to a peer-to-peer -peer network just to see how many documents they could gather dealing with medical records. And they ended up finding 20,000 patient records that had names, social security numbers, insurance codes. You knew exactly the type of medical problems those particular people had. They had four patients they found that had AIDS. 201 of them had mental diagnoses. 326 of them diagnosed with cancer. These are types of things you don't want to get out to the public. And so therefore, you want to be sure your users know using this type of peer-to-peer -peer traffic turns them into a file server. You're now providing everything on your hard drive now for the world to see. And so you have to make sure your users are aware of this and they're trained not to use this peer-to-peer -peer software. We have similar problems with social networking, with Facebook and with Twitter, because there can be spam links and phishing links right inside of that. So even if you see something you trust, you have to think twice to make sure that you're not being scammed out of private information or corporate information that could cause a problem later.